Hey, this is Dr. Graves from the California State University at Northridge coming to you from the Geography Department. This is a video tutorial that will help students who are sort of stuck with Microsoft Excel and have only the online version. The problem with the online version is if you go to the data tab here, there's no way to activate the data analysis tools. So we have to sort of abandon our dear cursed Excel in favor of something else. So if you have watched the first two videos in this series, you understand that we have this uh, data here that we were using to try to predict, or to understand better the level of fitness percentage across Los Angeles County by fifth graders. And here were our candidate explainers, the things that we are trying to use to understand the level of fitness. In the previous video, I used this set of data to create model one and you can see the outcome of that. We're going to use this now in a online uh, regression modeler tool. And then we'll go to uh, model two to do the same as well. Uh, they have slightly different variables, sometimes actually significantly different variables. So let's go ahead and get started. The main difference is that in using this statskingdom.com regression tool that the dependent variable fitness percentage is, is on the right of the data block. I've highlighted it, I've copied it, and then we're going to bring up the data modeling tool from the statistics online. So here it is. It's relatively simple to use. I suggest we just leave all of the uh, assumptions at the top in the default stage because they are um, standard. I'm going to come down here and we're going to uncheck enter the data directly and click enter raw data from Excel. So I'm just going to come in here and paste. That was a right click or a control V. Pretty simple and click calculate. After just a few seconds um, the data has calculated and we can if we want to and this may be a smart thing to do is to come back over here look at our data headers and we can rename these to uh, household size and this was white and this was BA for bachelor's degree uh, income was X4 and X5 was supermarket density the Y in this case was fitness that's what we wanted to know. Why is that the way it is? And these things explain. They're the explainers. Notice that the supermarket has an X and that's we're going to find out that later that this is not a, a, um, a useful variable to include in our prediction about childhood fitness. So let's come down and look at some of the things that let's just scroll down here. So here's our uh, coefficient tables and the T stat, these are the ones that we hope exceed 1.96 or negative 1.96 and all of them do with the exception of X5 which was our supermarket variable. That's why all of these, the P value, over here, all of these are less than 0.05. So we're 95% confident that each of these are acting effectively in the model to predict fitness. 
the density of supermarkets don't seem to have or doesn't seem to have anything to do really with uh, the outcome variable which is fitness. Down here we have uh, a readout of our R squared value which says that we're uh, explaining about 55 56 percent of the relationship between the predictor variables and the outcome variable which is fitness and then once we ad get the adjustment it's 55.1 and so that's reasonably strong but I think we can do better um, we get a sort of a green light on residual normality but a red light on homoscedasticity and that's something we would adjust for if we were um, trying to publish this and basically it, it revolves around and I'll show you down here the way that um, income has a tendency it's the, it's this one here x4 the way that it kind of triangles out here and as the income grows the outcome or as the income grows the way that the residuals or the noise in the model gets more intense and so um, we may just want to take out the the super high income neighborhoods that's one way of doing it or we have other ways of adjusting it so I'm going to scroll back up here you should uh, get a screen grab of w this so I have reloaded the web page to completely clear everything from the model one I'm gonna click enter raw data from Excel I will come back over to model two that I have supplied the class we're gonna click copy after highlighting the block of data that includes now fast food and unemployment rate will come back over here and paste once again the data from our Excel table and calculate. It takes a moment and here we have a new set of variables and they are X1 is unemployment rate, X2 is percent Hispanic and black combined, median age is X3, median income is X4, and the density of fast food is X5. We notice that the p-value is appearing in pink in all of these, meaning every single one of these is significant, including the effect of fast food on childhood fitness all of the variables are normal enough so that works here's a little chart with prediction and the residuals by neighborhood continue to scroll down notice again the p-values are all good the t val the t stat is above 1.96 or below negative 1.96 in every case and our adjusted r squared is up to 61 so we're explaining about 61, 62% of the variance in childhood fitness with the variables that we picked. The residuals are normal, so that's good. And the multicollinearity is um, low, so that's good. The only problem is the homoscedasticity, something we're not gonna worry about too much and once again this is the effect of uh, the craziness of income on um, in the model and so we could adjust for that if we needed to so what I want you to do is grab a screen grab uh, multiple ones particularly of this coefficient table um, maybe this right here indicating that you were able to uh, complete the assignment and then you will paste that or perhaps paste multiple things from this exercise into a Word document or you could probably even print this out as a PDF 
and upload it along with a paragraph or two that explains what you did and why this is a useful tool in your line of work. That concludes this video tutorial on multiple linear regression.